Hello. Welcome to an interactive explanation of how we choose a president in the United States using the Electoral College. My name is Steve Goldberg, and I'm the founder of Triangle Learning Community, a middle school opening in Durham, North Carolina in 2013. So you've probably heard that there's something called the Electoral College, which determines who the president will be. So instead of everybody in the country voting and just adding up the votes and seeing who wins, the method that we have is, and it goes back to historical times, um, each state has a certain number of electors. And uh, if you look at a state like Texas, it has 38 electoral votes. The reason it has that is because Texas has 36 representatives plus two senators. Um, every state gets two senators. D.C. isn't a state, but if it were, it would get one representative and two senators, um, roughly by its population. So um, Florida has 29 electoral votes. That means it has 27 representatives in Congress and two senators. So um, it would be possible to get more votes. And this happened to Al Gore in the 2000 presidential election. He got 50,999,897 votes, um, about half a million more than George Bush. But George Bush um, got 271 electoral votes and Al Gore got um, 266. So George Bush was president in 2000 and was reelected in 2004. So um, if we look here, if I scroll down a little bit, Try to just edge down. These are from 2008, the numbers. Um, and you can see that in the 2008 election, which uh, President Obama won, he had the blue ones here. Um, but the, so Texas had 34 electoral votes. Now it's up to 38. And the reason that happens is every 10 years, there's a census to determine how many representatives each state will have. And so the ones that are in blue here all gained at the expense of the ones in orange. So New York went down from 31 in the 2010 census, in the 2000 census, sorry, um, it went down to 29. And those two um, additional representatives went to other states such as Texas, which as we saw picked up four going from 38 to 34 to 38 and Florida went from 27 to 29. So um, this is the way they, they are lined up right now. And the objective is to win the most of the 538. And half of 538 is 269. So the magic number is 270. Um, a neat way to think about this is um, this site from the New York Times if you go to elections.nytimes.com slash 2012 slash electoral dash map, um, that's a mouthful, but it's worth it because this is one of the better tools I've seen for looking at the election. Um, and it shows you the, the bigger states, they're in the bigger squares here. So Florida, New York, Texas, and California. Um, and the dark blue ones are solid Obamas. The dark red ones are solid Romneys, um, light blue and light red are leaning and the yellows are the toss-up ones. That's where the candidates are going to spend most of their energy between now and the election on November 6th. So if we look at this, I clicked on map number one here. If we look at this format, you can play with different scenarios. So let's say that Mitt Romney wins all the ones he's expected to win, but also wins Virginia, North Carolina, Florida, and Ohio. He would actually still need to win four more electoral votes. Let's say New Hampshire's four. Let's say he gets Iowa with six. He gets the checkbox. He wins the election and becomes the next president because he has the most electoral votes. So um, this is what happened in 2008. And President Obama got 359 electoral votes. Um, this is a scenario where Mitt Romney might do um, focusing on southern and Western states, um, and if he picked those up, he'd get over the magic number of 270. So you get the idea, and you can play around with different scenarios. So something else to think about is that each state, with the exception of 
Maine and Alaska, and Nebraska, which we'll get to in a second, is winner take all. So um, these were from the 2004 and 2008 presidential elections. Um, and if you were to win, let's say, um, the state of Florida by only 100 votes, let's say there were 30 million people in Florida and 15 million and one of them voted for you and um, 14 million 999,999 voted for your opponent, you'd think those 27 electoral votes might split where you would get 14 and your opponent would get 13. But in fact, what happens is you would get all of them. Um, the two states where that's different are Maine and Nebraska. And you can see here they um, vote by congressional district so um, in, there are two congressional districts in Maine, three in Nebraska. Um, candidates can win each of those districts. And then whoever wins the popular vote gets the two Senate votes. So in the 2008 election, I believe that Nebraska split two of the congressional districts and the popular vote went for um, one candidate. And I think um, that was McCain and that Barack Obama got one um, of the uh, of the districts. We can check that in a minute, but hopefully you get the idea of how this works. So it's it's winner take all, and what that means is that um, certain states are, aren't going to be particularly in play. And you can see here these these red and blue states were ones in 2008 where the margin of victory was less than six percentage points. Um, and so it, it, that's where the other side has a chance of winning, because if, if you come close, you get nothing. So it doesn't make sense for um, President Obama, for instance, to campaign a lot in Texas because Mitt Romney, um, as a Republican candidate, is going to win Texas. And similarly, California and New York are pretty strongly um, Democratic states. So if we were to look at this Wall Street Journal poll here, um, this shows the swing states as North Carolina and um, Virginia, Ohio, Florida, and uh, up there in Colorado. And I thought this site was set up to allow you to get details about the various states. Let me try resetting it for a second here because um, it's actually pretty neat to see this feature. Yeah, so if we scroll down, here's North Carolina, click for more. And the poll is within one percentage point. And you can see at the last four elections, North Carolina had been Republican, but Barack Obama won narrowly in 2008. You can see what's going on in Iowa. And the other poll that we looked at, the New York Times one, had um, Ohio as a swing state. But the Wall Street Journal's most recent one has Ohio um, President Obama's up by five percentage points. There's still more than a month left between now and the election, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there, but it'll be interesting to see where the candidates spend their time. Probably most of the time will be in these swing states. And again, you can see here in this look at the, uh, the swing states, you can see where the candidates have spent their time and money, the, these handprints. Um, or here the purple things are where the candidate spent time in the 2004 election um, where they visited and that corresponds pretty closely to where they spent money um, on TV advertising and this is during the last uh, final four weeks of the election here. So you'll probably see a similar trend in the 2012 election and um, I think that pretty much wraps up the uh, just look at the Electoral College. Here's a quick calendar, and you can see that we're coming up. There's a big debate, um, the first one between the presidential candidates on the 3rd of October. Um, that looks like up because of my handwriting, but that actually says VP debate. Um, and then there's a town hall debate on the 16th, a foreign policy debate on the 22nd, and then the candidates um, won't meet again, and, and, uh, and then we'll find out who... Um, the president will be for the next four years on election day. Will it be Barack Obama or will it be Mitt Romney? And now that you understand a little more about the Electoral College, um, you can follow the process more. I would love it if you would go in to this uh, Google Doc. The link to it is below. And then you can write 
your questions here and then just put your name after your question and I'll make it this font a little smaller so it's down to maybe 18 point and uh, you list your questions and I'll respond to your questions in purple or something Steve will respond all right thanks for watching and I look forward to uh, being interactive with you in looking at how the uh, how this election works thanks